What I have here are a couple of devices that we can use to look at the polarisation uh, and other effects that we see with microwaves. On the left, I have a microwave transmitter. See the power is on. This one here is run off the mains. We also have uh, something that um, we can use to uh, actually detect these, these waves. And what we do is we can, um, first of all, turn it on. This is just powered by battery, so I've done a battery test. And then I'm going to set it to gain one. And I can also adjust the volume. Now, when this device receives microwaves, we hear the sound. When it comes to looking at light, we can use a very small filter, in this case a Polaroid. And what that does, but when you have the two filters together, they, they block out the light. In my, terms of microwaves, because they have a longer wavelength, we're going to use a different filter. Now this one here is a load of metal strips on a, uh, a piece of plastic. Now the plastic is transparent to the microwaves and they pass through it, but we have uh, lots and lots of these metal things that cause um, the plain polarised wave to become filtered once again. And what I'm going to do is the setup is uh, the transmitter, the filter, and then the receiver. And as we rotate that filter through 90 degrees, we can actually record this. Using uh, a protractor if we wanted to, we could also record the actual reading on the machine. What we find is that uh, the intensity uh, isn't just proportional to the angle that this has gone through. Uh, we find that the intensity is equal to the original intensity from the transmitter times uh, cos squared theta.